two years ago, despite razor-thin majorities in Congress and extraordinary political hyperpartisanship, President Biden passed his flagship bipartisan infrastructure law. And now the president has dispatched Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to give an update to the American people. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, got a clip or two to play. This one is a bit long. It's about two and a half, three minutes, and it's an update from Pete Buttigieg to the American people about the state of the bipartisan infrastructure law. So let's take a look. Ready? I think it's important that we begin by taking a step back and remember where we were not that long ago. When President Biden first took office, the U.S. was facing record deaths from the coronavirus. More than 22,000 Americans died from COVID in just seven days. Air travel had fallen by 60 percent. Worldwide surge in COVID cases is wreaking havoc on people's travel plans. And the pandemic caused extreme shocks to our supply chain. Bottlenecks in the world's supply chains. Leading to shortages, empty aisles, and Americans paying more. And the crisis also exposed how vulnerable and underfunded our infrastructure had become. Though the truth is, everybody knew that. For years, an infrastructure bill had become a punchline in Washington. It would come and go with no results. My fellow Americans today, I want you to know, we hear you and we see you. But President Biden heard the American people loud and clear. And under his leadership, it finally happened. Yeah. Let's remember, all through that first year, commentators, skeptics, said that nothing could be done on a bipartisan basis in today's Washington. But together, we passed a once-in-a-generation investment that is building a stronger America. And so we got to work. So far, there are 37,000 infrastructure projects and counting across the nation benefiting from this legislation. Landmark projects like the Hudson River Tunnel between New York and New Jersey, or the Brent Spence Bridge in Kentucky and Ohio. Airport renovations from Alaska all the way to Key West, Florida. Supply chain advances from Tell City, Indiana to Fernley, Nevada. Some of these projects might not get national news, but to the people counting on them as they get to work every single day, these projects matter enormously. And Americans across the country are stepping up to make this a reality. This work is creating hundreds of thousands of good paying jobs at the local level. We have come a long way. But most of our work is still ahead of us. The work we're doing right now will ensure that the America we know, the America we love, will be even better for future generations. And for President Biden and for this whole administration, it starts with delivering on the very basic thing that make people's everyday life possible. And the great news is we're just getting started. It's a great video. It's a good update. Um, yeah, so this is the interesting thing. One of the things about the Trump administration, other than all the, the lies and the authoritarianism, was the fact that it made news all the time because Donald Trump sucked at governing. He sucked at leadership, but he was really good at making waves and making headlines. When the fact of the matter is that responsible governance is generally not particularly sexy, it's not particularly salacious, and it doesn't generate that sort of media buzz. Right, But that's that's not something that we should expect from our leaders. We should want them to just quietly do their jobs and get the hell out of our way. And for the most part, even though the Biden administration is certainly not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, there have been some flagship accomplishments that we have not seen, certainly from a Republican administration, but for most Democratic administrations in modern history. And the bipartisan infrastructure law is kind of a good example of that, Okay, because to be clear, the vast majority of its success belongs to the Democratic Party because very few Republicans actually voted for it, but enough to make it bipartisan in both the House and the Senate. And we'll get to that in just a minute because those Republicans were lambasted by their colleagues for giving Biden a political win, even though it was the right thing to do for the country. Again, we'll unpack that in a minute. But if you want to see the progress of the bipartisan infrastructure law outside of what it may be doing in your local community, the White House actually has and has had an interactive map available for some time about the state of the bipartisan infrastructure law. You can go, and these are just the public infrastructure. This doesn't count like private investments into semiconductor factories or anything like that. But you can look and you can zoom in as much as you want and click on a specific example and it will tell you, you know, what branch of government, what type of funding, what's the name of the project, what's the funding amount, 
It gives you all sorts of things. I mean, you just click all kinds of, of whatever option you want. I mean, there are 37,000, I think Secretary Buttigieg said. I mean, just all these dots around here. I would definitely encourage you to take a look. Um, now, the White House, by the way, its social media game has been phenomenal. Um, I would say probably it still needs to do better. It needs to get the word out, but it's been a hell of a lot better than I would expect from somebody as old as President Biden. Um, but his social media game, his administration's social media game is pretty good. And they've adopted a more rhetorically aggressive tone, which they should, especially as we head into an election year. And it's important to distinguish between the Democrats and the Republicans. So the White House dropped this uh, Twitter thread. There are a lot more. There are a lot more congressional Republicans taking credit for President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law than who actually voted for it. On the two-year anniversary of the law, let's take a look, and it cites a few examples. Tommy Tuberville, who is the guy basically single-handedly weakening national security by blocking crucial military appointments in the Senate. He's the the football coach from Alabama. He talks about it all the time. He voted against the bipartisan infrastructure law, but he's also touting its investments. Okay, so he's. I'm pleased to see Pelham awarded a grant to make much needed infrastructure updates so that Shelby County residents can continue safely going about their daily routines with minimal disruption. Um, and then he's talking about broadband as well, again, even though he voted against it. Uh, Tom Cotton and Boozman, uh, two Republican senators, both voted against the infrastructure law. And yet, despite that, they are celebrating the effects of the bipartisan infrastructure law in Arkansas. Same thing for John Cornyn of Texas. He voted against the bipartisan infrastructure law, uh, but cited $3.3 billion in investments for broadband. The Biden administration is proud of our infrastructure investments that are so popular that congressional Republicans are trying to take credit for them despite voting against them. Like President Biden says, we'll see them at the next groundbreaking. Again, perfectly reasonable response by the White House. They should actually, I think you could easily make the argument, they should be more rhetorically aggressive even than that. Because, again, the American people have lives, right? They have families and loved ones and jobs and passions and, and, and all the things, hobbies as well. And we also have a very short attention span even on our best day. So I think it's important to really viscerally establish these, uh, these I don't know, these dichotomies, the differences, okay, so, so that when the American people goes to the, go to, rather, the uh, ballot box in 2024, they will have this in mind, okay, well, if we like this bridge, if we like these potholes being cleared, if we like the broadband, uh, broadband, broadband uh, investments, if we like all this and that, then we probably ought to vote for Democrats because they're much more likely to actually get it done. Because as Pete Buttigieg pointed out, Donald Trump talked a big game for years and years and years and failed to get it done. Now, this clip is from our queen, Jessica Tarlov, on, on The Five, the, the one sane Fox News anchor or Fox News host. Um, and this is what she had to say. Um, this was a few months ago. This may have been back in like August or July or something like that. But she pointed out the irony of Republicans opposing the bill, uh, but then wanting to take credit for it, and also how the funds are being you know, dispersed. But I think it's wonderful that there are new boom towns and boom states, and I think that that should be celebrated. I also think that it would be great then if there are these southern Republican-controlled states that they start paying their fair share and take care of Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Kentucky, because I'm sick of taking care of them from up here in New York or in California, because blue states pay the highest taxes, and then those federal dollars get shipped down south to make sure that they have decent schools, they have health care, they have good roads, et cetera. So by all means, South Carolina, Nancy Mace, who wants to take uh, credit for things she voted against, please give some money to Kentucky, help them out. Tommy Tuberville, talk about you all the time. You should be paying more and taking care of your own people instead of feeding off of Democrats that pay higher taxes. And I mean, that's just a general principle in, in general, the fact that blue states are economically more prosperous and they rely considerably less on the federal government than red states. But she's right. The fact of the matter is that the bipartisan infrastructure law is benefiting red states more than blue states. Red states are relying on it more. The data, this is from Bloomberg, data backs Biden claim that red states want infrastructure funds. And it's also being reaffirmed by the Wall Street Journal, you know, another conservative outlet. Biden's green subsidies uh, attached to the bipartisan infrastructure law are attracting billions billions of dollars to red states. So red states are feeling the results of President Biden's stewardship in a positive way that they simply wouldn't and didn't when Donald Trump was in office because he didn't get any bipartisan or even partisan infrastructure law passed. Now, the last thing I want to point out is, in addition to the stark contrast, 
The fact of the matter is that when Republicans did support the president's initiative, the few who did, they suffered for it reputationally and politically. Representative Fred Upton received this threatening voicemail because he was among the group of Republicans who voted for the infrastructure bill. Effing traitor, that's what I hope I, you are. Uh, you're an effing piece of S traitor. I hope you die. I hope everyone in your effing family dies and go out, goes on and so forth. All for voting for an infrastructure law which would benefit red states at least as much as blue states. But the fact that he helped President Biden get a political win was enough to earn the wrath of whoever this person was. Matt Gates also said that uh, if they have leadership positions, um, if Republicans have leadership positions and committees and they voted for President Biden's infrastructure law, uh, they should lose. They should be kicked out. And then Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, fundraised against people, you know, again, who, who backed the bipartisan infrastructure law. So this is a party. The Republican Party is a party that punishes bipartisanship, even when it benefits their own constituents. It's a disgusting, bad faith, disloyal opposition party. It's an authoritarian cult, objectively inferior in terms of governance. The Democratic Party on its worst day is better for governing the country than the Republican Party on its very best day. That's simply a fact. Anyone who says otherwise is factually wrong. And you and I have to do our part to get the news out there. And so for, th for that matter, does the Biden administration and does the Democratic Party and do their surrogates, they have to, we all have to do that. Um, and especially as we get closer and closer to the election. So it will be great to see. I mean, it's great to see what the progress is of the bipartisan infrastructure law now. And I'm excited to see where it'll be from or a year from now. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments.